is because you might risk, run the risk of losing that vessel for future interventions, for surgery, and so on. And therefore, I think it is important that we treat with a lot of respect the femoral artery or any other artery in the neonate. Uh, but fortunately, many of the things that we use for interventions do not require anything more than for French balloon dilation for uh, critical asthenesis. With the veins, you can use bigger. So the site too, because uh, you have the right materials, but the site is wrong. That again will not guarantee a successful procedure, and therefore I think tend to use a lot more in terms of uh, stenting uh, the PDA by using either the axillary or the carotid artery access. And I think this is important paper that was published about three years ago from uh, Houston, uh, showing the utility of uh, percutaneous carotid access by ultrasound guidance, which we are doing more and more today. And this is one of the examples whereby uh, you can put a four French sheath into the carotid artery for an easier balloon dilation of the aortic valve, and this is done percutaneously under ultrasound guidance. So important to have that kind of equipment in the cath lab, as well as learning the skills of doing ultrasound guidance. So, uh, also, as I said, uh, most of the time you can get away with a four French sheath. Uh, for example, here in a patient who required stenting and it has to go to the to that axillary artery because the way the ductus go, it is really very, very difficult, if not impossible, to approach this femoral artery. This is, in the past, we used to do a cut down for the carotid artery, but we tend to do this percutaneously with other guidance. Now, sometimes you need a longer shift, and fortunately, if you have a PIVS that needs stenting, uh, because you can't really approach this from the axillary artery. So we have the 25 cm through more four French shears, and which is ideal for this kind of PDAs. It is okay sometimes to use a shorter shears, but you run the problem when trying to remove a, a stent, which has remove the balloon after the stent is, is inflated. If you peel too hard, you might also pull the stent together with it, and to have a long shears, which is tip just in front of the PDA, will really be very helpful in terms of one, putting the stent across, and number two, pulling the balloon out once the stent is expanded. But not all the time that you can get away with a 25 cm thermal sheath. For example, in this kind of a PDA, which comes off from the left subcarian artery in the right, in the left, right at the arch with a disconnected primary artery, and this is an occluded ductus. Uh, you need something like this, which is a uh, five French guide catheter, GR guide catheter. Unfortunately, and this is only available in five French, the smallest diameter. Then again, we run the problem of its length, which is 100 cm. Therefore, a lot of dead space that we need to be mindful about. And number two, a five French size. How to overcome this? Uh, luckily, from the adult side, we have what we call the guide shear slender, which is uh, although it's a five French lumen, but the outer diameter is four French because it has very thin very thin wall so that you don't really need to upsize to a five French and which is very, very ideal if you need to use a five French guide sheath, a guide catheter in, in the neonate as shown here. The pink is four French uh, outer diameter and pink, all pink is four French, normal four French, but with the white uh, housing of the valve, it shows that this is a 5.4, meaning that the lumen is 5, but the outer diameter is 4 French, and this is very, very useful if you ever need to use a 5 French guide catheter for delivery of PD in a, in a, in a, in a neonate. Right, uh, other introduces, you, uh, introduces, I think, when you have a PIVS, which where you have a problem crossing the tricuspid valve, the morning sheaths you can direct it towards the tricuspid valve and that will help us to get into the RV more easily for the angiograms, especially when you have this kind of PIVS where the GR is very severe, the R is very, very dilated, almost impossible to get the catheter into the RV, and the Mullin sheath uh, doing it coaxially is very, very useful in terms of making it uh, a lot simpler. And also, on this, I just want to show that sometimes when you have already perforated the valve, the balloon may have a lot of problem tracking over this wire because it is a bit soft, and therefore using a GR guide 
is very very helpful in terms of preventing all these wires coiling the ROE and making the balloon advance more, a bit more difficult. So this is going to be a talk later on the testing, so I won't go into that. But my last part of this talk is really about the guide wires, which in the large part I want to speak about coronary wires because this is very very useful for new nets. As uh, Makram said, there are various characteristics of wires, but for our interest in pediatric is really how stiff one wire is over the other, and we use this for cannulation, for crossing the stenotic valves of vessels, for placement of shears, and also for placement of uh, uh, stents, for, for shears for delivery. So there are a lot of variability in terms of stiffness, a lot of different characteristics which the adult cuddle is used, and what we call the frontline wires are those that have a tip load, which means that the tip is soft, one gram of load will bend the wire, and this is what we use as the frontline wire, and especially for very tortuous lesions as well as for cannulation. And you have the intermediate wire, which has a three gram tip load, and this is the starting of uh, chronic occlusions you have it for the adult cardiologist, but for us, it is more to have us implant a stent because we want something with a stiffer body. And then the more stiff is the what we call the Conquest Pro, and this is from the Asahi family of wires, whereby the tip load starts at 9 gram, it can go up to 12 and 20 grams if you need to operate a difficult valve which is thick and you can't really, and you don't have the RF wire in the generator. So these are the various groups of guide wires, and this is only from the Asahi company, in which they, they are very specialized in terms of manufacturing guide wires, which start from the very soft, floppy wire of one gram or less in terms of stiff load to the intermediate, and then to the very stiff wire, which is used mainly for difficult uh, chronic vocal occlusions. But for us, we tend to use this to perforate an attractive family valve if you do not have the RF generator wire. So why we use it for cannulation? I think, as you can see here, this is a very soft tip wire, and with axillary artery approach, very often the wire will go up to the vertebral artery, and therefore, if the wire is stiff, you might run the risk of traumatizing the vertebral artery, and therefore, I tend to use this almost all the time when cannulating the carotid artery, or even a cut down axillary uh, carotid artery approach. So just an example how useful these soft wires are. This is a very uh, complicated, tortuous PDA as shown here by the, the CT and the echo, although the echo does not show that because echo is really a projection. Oh, sorry, the angio is just a projection. But you can see that, that what the CT scan uh, showed us earlier, that uh, the wire follows very nicely because this is a very soft, floppy wire. It winds around that virtuosity, and that really helps uh, to us to get a second wire, which is a bit more stiffer, a three gram uh, tip load wire, and this is the wire that we use eventually for the stand delivery. So we have two wires here, the very floppy wire, first to probe the PDA, and then we have the, soft, uh, the more intermediate stiffer wire for the stand delivery. And they tend to straighten out the PDA for the stand implantation. And it is useful because those two are differently colored. So the, the wire for the stand is lightly colored, which is light blue, whereas the softer wire is the uh, dark green wire. And therefore, everyone knows automatically if you want to put a stand, the stand goes onto the lighter colored wire. So that tends to eliminate confusions as well as uh, save more time. But it's very important that once you do that, that before the stand is expanded, remove the other wire because otherwise you'll be trapping that wire and that will lead to more difficult problems eventually. And this is the end of the procedure. Uh, one more example of how important wires are. So this is the example that I showed earlier, a six day old, but this was a bit unusual to be presented so early without any other cardiac lesions, thanks to the fetal cardiologist. And this occluded uh, PDA from the left subclavian is the supply to the isolated left primary artery, which is no longer patent. And therefore, uh, we have to use the softest of the wires just to drill this push gently at the same time, uh, do a drilling motion, which eventually you can see on the next slide here that it, it does have that GIF story. 
I didn't show that it just moved, but what was important is that it is important to use the softest wire for this kind of situation, put a second wire, and then this is the part where sometimes when you want to put a second wire, if it's soft, it won't go through because it's just so tight, and therefore we have to use something which is of intermediate stiffness, which went through fairly easily. That one. Then this is when you have the two wires and then it's implanted. So the other part about it is, well, as what I said earlier, sometimes when you don't have or you don't want to use radio frequency, you have the choice of using uh, the wires which are stiffer ended, like not the stiff end of the gut wire, but stiff the part, uh, there's a stiffer wire for chronic total occlusions in the coronary work. And this is an example of how we use it. This is a PIVS. Again, this is not RF, but this is a nine, nine gram tip load uh, CTO wire, which they are does normally use to open up chronically occluded uh, coronary artery. Again, gentle push with drilling motion so that we don't really, you need to use a lot of force to push. Right. Well, lastly, I think what is important here with some gut wires, as, uh, those that have stainless steel core, what happens is that as you push this wire distally in the primary artery after you open the valve, it tends to kink, and this is something that we need to be mindful of. Don't push anymore once we think that we are distal enough in the primary artery. And I just want to finish with this example that this is a PIVS. You need to, what do you notice here? So the arrow tells us that this wire should have been there, but this has been pushed uh, over uh, through uh, uh, the plural, the, the plural, and onto the mediastinum. So this is something which is uh, a complication. They can occur with wires, although it looks something that which is not dangerous. It's a nice coronary wire, but this can happen. You can see here that. As we proceed with the procedure, we watch the development of this hemothorax, and once we are finished with the procedure, we put in a gas drain to remove the condition of blood, which is caused by this kinking of the wire tip, which can be pushed seriously without a lot of effort. So just to summarize, uh, I'd like to emphasize what I started off earlier, Sometimes it really is not possible to delay procedures beyond the neonatal period because these are critical lesions like severe critical AS or PAS or adductus, which is closing in a duct dependent lesion. Uh, there have been a few uh, devices or, or balloons or wires that have been developed specifically for neonates, but there are not many. So we have to really borrow a lot of things from the adult world, from the coronary intervention cardiologists. And they have done, they, are, they, are, they have remarkable array of wires and balloons, and they have done a lot of work on this, a lot of studies, a lot of research, and therefore we really benefit by tagging or leapfrogging on, onto the adult pathologies and borrow a lot of things from them and learn from them. I think it's useful to attend one or two lectures, for example, on CTO users in coronary intervention. Diagnostic catheter, I think I couldn't emphasize more. Uh, GR in neonates is not so much for coronary assessment, but more to help us with regards to doing specific angiograms in a very specific positions to help us assess the lesions more better, and then also to initiate intervention, for example, putting the wire across the standard valve or the PDE. And Secondly, I also spoke about the importance of vascular sheaths, especially for arteries. We should not put any more than four French. If we do need to use a five French guide catheter for stand implantation, we have the five on four slender sheaths from Drumo, which has the diameter of a four French externally and an internal diameter of five French so that we can use. We don't have to upsize a sheath in a neonate. And coronary guide wires, I can't stress the importance that we need to understand uh, the various the range of guide wires available, particularly with regards to their softness or their stiffness for different purposes, from cannulation right up to therapeutic use of creating a perforation in an atrial valve. I think also balloons, we have the Tyshak balloons, which is very low profile, 
but sometimes we also need to borrow a lot uh, from the adult world. Small coronary balloons like two millimeters, three millimeters, four millimeters are excellent to be used in, in the neonate. They are very trackable and very effective uh, in terms of dilating vessel valves. Eh? And we can use right from uh, balloons as well as stents from uh, three millimeters up to 4.5 millimeters in entity. Finally, uh, with, with regards to stents, yes, we, uh, we, need, we need it just for a short while in units. Therefore, is there a role for something which does not stay forever in the baby? I think there's an important role in the future for stents that will biodegrade or bioresorb so that this will not be a hindrance when the surgeons come in for the later. But this is for another. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Well, I would like to share an extension of the previous speaker's 